I'm Tim Nelson. I'm a reporter here at Minnesota Public Radio. I cover public safety issues. And one of the biggest things on the public safety agenda recently has been natural gas safety because of two house explosions, one in Edina and one in St. Paul. Now, there were different reasons for each of these explosions, but they're both linked by a common technology. It's called trenchless utility installation. It's used to put in gas pipes, water pipes, sewer pipes, phone, TV, all sorts of different things. The technical term for it is horizontal directional drilling. Here's what it looks like in action. Now this works really great in neighborhoods that are already built up like this one that I built up on this whiteboard this morning. It works because you don't have to tear things up like yards and streets, stuff like that. And these days it's very sophisticated. These drilling bits are about as long as a baseball bat, a little bit bigger around, and they have a radio transmitter in them. That means that people up on the surface can use a detector and walk along and see exactly where they're drilling. Here's a picture of one of those. The trouble with this technology is you know where you are, but you don't know what else is down there. And there's a lot of it. Take this neighborhood, for instance. You're going to have a sewer line and a water line coming from each house. Now, in my neighborhood, they were put in in about 1925 by hand. Here's what it probably looked like while they were working on it. So my house was originally heated with coal. Natural gas came in a lot later, first with steel and then with plastic. Plastic works better and it's a lot easier to put in. The trouble is when the natural gas crews come to put that plastic pipe in, there's a lot of stuff in the way. There's trees, there's flower gardens, there's street signs, there's fire hydrants. All that stuff that's been built up for the last hundred years or so. So often what they do is they look for the path of least resistance. And in a neighborhood like mine, that's right under the sidewalk. Usually there isn't much stuff under there already, and it has the advantage of being covered up by concrete so I won't dig it up while I'm planting a rose bush or something like that. But there's a downside to drilling a hole all the way down the street in front of all these houses, and that is that you know you have to cross this sewer and water line every time you go in front of a house. Now in most cases, that isn't so hard. At my house, I actually looked this up, my sewer pipe is about seven feet down. The gas company runs a shallow pipe, they know they miss it. In other neighborhoods though, there might be bedrock just three feet down. That means the pipe is right there, right where they can run into it. Now, unlike the street, this side of the house side of the sidewalk is private property. You aren't obliged to keep a record or even know where those pipes are. After five or six owners or 50 years, probably nobody remembers anyway. So along comes the gas company. At this point, all they've really got to go on is a best guess. They figure that this thing is about seven feet down. They could dig it up, tear up the sidewalk and have a look, but that would defeat the whole purpose of heating these houses without making a colossal mess. And there really isn't that much that could go wrong after all. For instance, if they hit the water line, there's going to be some water bubbling up in the yard and you know, maybe the toilets won't flush or the dishwasher won't run in the house, so they know something's wrong, they can go down there and fix it. The sewer's a little different story. Down there, there's a pipe, probably about this big around. The gas line's going to be probably a little bigger than this marker. They run it through there, it's going to look a little bit like this underground. The sewer is probably going to work for a while. The sewage will run around that pipe, but eventually it's going to get clogged. At that point, the homeowner gets on the phone and calls the drain cleaner, who comes out with a long steel coil and a spinning knife on the end. They're meant to cut tree roots, so they're pretty sharp. They hit that gas line, they sever it or put a big hole in it, and suddenly you've got high pressure explosive gas pouring into the plumbing under your house. Now, if you live in a neighborhood where the gas and the water and the sewer all got put in at the same time, that's probably not a problem because everybody could see what each other was doing. But state and gas company officials are discovering that they really don't know what's down there. And they're finding out the hard way when houses blow up like the one did in St. Paul. Now you know a little bit more about why that happened. I'm Tim Nelson with Minnesota Public Radio News.